Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have to look at the latest from the live radar so we have wintry showers pushing in through today it's quite a short cold spell so we'll have a look at the weather warnings associated with it so we've got yellow snow and ice warnings issued for today and some places tomorrow as well and then we'll have a look at the UKV have a look at the precipitation and the temperature as of course we've got this wintry weather the next sort of 24 to 48 hours before it does clear and we do go more unsettled but slightly milder nothing ridiculously mild nothing warm at all but more towards average for the time of year we'll then have a look at the longer range look at the gfs gm ecmwf and the ensembles is looking like it's going to be pretty unsettled for at least the, at the rest of march with it potentially being cold at times we're looking likely we will see brief colder snaps nothing too ridiculous and generally quite an unsettled outlook so cool and unsettled again sort of things we're not really want to be seeing in spring when we are exiting out of cold long wet winter we always want to be seeing a little bit more sunshine than we do have at the moment but of course this is what happens sometimes when we get these sun stratospheric warmings we do get the southerly track jet stream and periods of cooler and unsettled weather so we'll have a look at that in detail in the second half of the video so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description so if we do start on the live radar you can see we've got a lot of wintry showers around in the north and west and these will be pushing further southwards and eastwards and even coming quite far inland through the rest of this afternoon you can see further southwards and eastwards we've got this area of precipitation as i'm calling this around 10 a.m it is moving into the near continent but it is mostly rain on the radar here but has, some of it has been falling in snow and of course you can't take these uh, radar types too literally some of this will be which uh, mixture of uh, sort of rain sleet and snow but of course falling onto generally mild ground the air temperatures are still two or three degrees um, it's really not going to accumulate at all really um, just be uh, a bit of falling snow in some of these areas but these snow showers further north and westwards, with the ground a bit colder, some accumulations are possible over the highest routes. And of course, there are some quite high intensities as well. So temporary accumulations are quite likely in a few spots, but most areas shouldn't see any disruption and could just see a few heavy wintry showers with some whiteout conditions at times. As I said, these will continue to move further southwards and eastwards, probably losing their intensity a little bit and their size, but will continue to perhaps provide a few hazards through the rest of the day. Now, if you put on the temperatures as of around 10 a.m., it is colder further north and westwards, more down towards the low single digits, if not towards freezing, especially over the higher ground of northern England and Scotland. We get nothing too ridiculously cold. You can see towards the London area in the southeast, a little pocket of cooler air there. That is evaporative cooling under that heavier precipitation where the air does temporarily cool down uh, a couple of degrees below what it would be without the precipitation. Now, if we do have a look at the latest weather warnings, you can see we've got widespread snow and ice warnings issued at the moment, but most of these actually do expire by the time this video is published. All of these snow and ice warnings for Northern Ireland and Scotland pretty much do expire. Um, again, interesting seeing that, as these wintry showers will continue through the rest of the day, but the main risk now... Uh, according to the Met Office warnings, is gone. However, we do have a snow warning issued for the Northern Isles of Scotland from 5pm yesterday until 11am tomorrow. Again, high impact, low likelihood of heavier snow. Again, close to that cold rare mass, more um, ocean around means more convection and more showers. So, likely to see some snow in these areas. Again, could be some centimetres of accumulations. Again, we will just have to see with that. But, Elsewhere, no other warnings issued, but it will still be quite cold. There will be a risk of winchiness and especially ice overnight tonight. With those showers that have given uh, snow or ice or sleet to the surfaces, it will freeze overnight tonight. Regardless of if anything settles, as long as you get a bit of moisture on the surface, you can see ice tonight as those temperatures do plunge to a few degrees below freezing. 
Now, if you look at the UK VNC, what that is showing for the precipitation and the temperature over the course of the next five days, you can see those various snow showers pushing in at the moment, and they'll continue over the course of the rest of today. You can see even through this afternoon, those winter showers continue in parts of southern Scotland and northern England, they continue all the way this evening, and look quite heavy in places across Wales, in northern England, perhaps even into the Midlands as well at times through this evening. So interesting seeing that the snow and ice warnings do expire. Again, perhaps there is no risk at all for any accumulations, but still for all these heavy wintry showers you'd expect to see some sort of low level warning perhaps for ice uh, as the sun does set those temperatures will uh, will fall down and these surfaces will likely drop below freezing so we could see some ice age accumulations here through the evening those showers do continue but around midnight they do peter out we'll right see a widespread frost develop into tomorrow we'll still be cold at least for the morning through perhaps to the early afternoon before a big rain band does move in and it will give snow on its leading edge in the north and the east. Beyond that, through into Thursday, we continue to see heavier precipitation move in at times with some heavier showers, but also some dry spells further southwards and eastwards. This will continue into the weekend with a lot of heavy rain in places into Saturday as well, especially in the southeast. Could see a little low pressure system move in there that could give some real heavy rain through Friday night into Saturday. And we continue to see heavy showers moving in. And it looks like you'll see a brief colder air mass move in there, at least for northern areas on the package of that low pressure. So generally cool and generally pretty unsettled for the rest of the week. I do put on those two meter max temperatures. You can see this through this afternoon widely in those mid single digits in the north, perhaps mid to low single digits, further southwards, maybe mid to high single digits. But of course, feeling a good few degrees colder than this because of that wind chill. As we request beyond that into the early hours of Wednesday, widespread frost developing ahead of that weather front, widely a few degrees below freezing. Again, ice and, and the, uh, ice could be an issue and there could be some frost around as well. But into tomorrow afternoon, some northern and eastern areas could still be pretty cold, mid single digits. But once that weather front does sweep in, it will give a big rise to those temperatures. Still perhaps cold in Scotland into Friday, but most areas, sorry, into Thursday, but most areas look at that, 10 to 14 degrees, a lot milder, and feeling a lot milder with that southwesterly flow. Into Friday, still pretty mild, 10 to 15 degrees perhaps. Generally, more towards average to perhaps slightly above average for the time of year for a cooler air mass to sweep through on Saturday into Sunday, giving all the areas slightly cooler air again look at the upper air temperatures not ri ridiculously cold pretty chilly nothing too bad uh, again just the back side of the low pressure and again just keeping that cold feel at times and this sort of pattern we're going to continue to see with this southerly tracking jet allowing these cold air masses to drift in at times now if you finish the video by just having a look at the longer range charts now if you start on the gfs you can see that northerly flow coming in at the moment very cool and unsettled for a southwesterly flow moves in as that low pressure system moves past we do see a brief northerly flow and the jet stream generally is tracking to our south and this allows low pressures to tumble in briefly milder air masses but also briefly colder air masses moving in from the north as well keeping us pretty cold perhaps at times again you can see the upper air temperatures cold areas remaining to our north but milder areas building to our south not only could this give us oscillating air masses but it could really fuel those low pressure systems we could see quite unsettled perhaps even stormy sort of conditions over the coming weeks but of course we will just have to see how that does develop the only thing that's looking quite likely is upper air temperatures most likely won't get much above average, really, apart from maybe some brief milder sectors further southwards. It will generally be average to perhaps slightly below average with cooler snaps at times, but also staying very unsettled. There's perhaps a sort of a typical pattern where it's cold, not quite cold enough for widespread snow, but cold enough for those temperatures in sort of the mid single digits, feeling quite horrible and miserable out there at times so not a particularly good outlook if you're looking for something a bit drier and a little bit warmer as well now if we have a look at the gm see how that does compare over the coming weeks again a northerly wind moving in and eventually low pressure moves in with slightly air warmer air mass eventually though low pressure does return with cold air feeding in from the north the jet stream 
struck well to our south and you can see it's unsettled and cold air masses are drifting in. You can see to our north all those cold air masses are starting to disintegrate now. Um, that cold air is reducing quite significantly so it will get increasingly harder to see anything cold or wintry as we progress through the rest of March into April but the potential is still there if we did see a real polar plunge but with this sort of pattern it's going to confine that cold air really to only northern areas. Further south we could still see frost and things like that but I'm not expecting temperatures to get much below the mid to high single digits now. But so you can see that suddenly tracking jet stream keeping any of those warm spring like air masses well to our south and more Atlantic cooler air masses are dominating our weather and you can see that from the temperature deviation generally average to below average a lot more blues in the north atlantic towards the uk keeping us relatively cool and relatively unsettled if you compare that to the ecm wf and northerly wind at the moment southwesterly flow coming back in and keeping us unsettled and cold with a bit of blocking still towards greenland bit of a northerly flow with that southerly tracking jet stream. We can see that continue all the way to the end of this period. And again, cold air filtering out into the North Atlantic, fueling these low pressure systems, keeping us cool and unsettled. Those mild air masses are just lingering two hours south. Now you can see this pretty well emphasised by looking at the ensembles, generally average to below average for the foreseeable future. Yes, briefly milder air masses perhaps towards the end of the week into the start of next week, but really only a couple of degrees above average. And with precipitation and cloud mixing in, it probably won't feel much like it's above average. Beyond that, as we hit towards the 20th to the end of March, we did think there could be a briefly cooler spell, but the models have backed off a little bit from that, and more generally average to slightly below average than anything more than a degree or two below average that was perhaps suspected earlier. But they could still be colder spells. we still got some quite cool ensemble members at times, but look at that generally average to below average from the majority of ensemble members, keeping us cool and unsettled. You can see the dew points uh, from the midnight run generally still low single digits, especially for the last 10 days of the month. Again, symbolic of cool Arctic air masses feeding in, but getting moderated quite significantly by the Atlantic. So it is cool, but nothing amazingly cold at all. And you can see that on the two meter temperatures over the next few weeks, generally for London, 8 to 10 degrees, maybe slightly above the end of this week into the start of next week, perhaps getting to the low teens, but generally not much above sort of 7, 8, 9 degrees. And of course, with cooler, wetter weather, it will make it feel colder than that with a bit more of a wind chill. So not looking terribly warm, and March could end up as being quite considerably below average with the cold start of the month we have had. So we will just have to see how it does play out but not looking encouraging if you're looking for any warmer drier weather over the coming weeks if you finish by looking at the ensembles for the ecm that we have pretty similar cold at the moment briefly milder later this week into the start of next week again a couple of degrees above average nothing spectacular and of course with the rain that we saw in the ukv it's going to make it feel cold beyond that you can see generally average to below average maybe slightly above average at times as well generally cool and unsettled uh, and again, average this time of year with sunshine can feel pretty warm, but this sort of average upper air temperature is going to be associated with cloud, precipitation and wind. So it's going to not only give those temperatures uh, a little bit, or take away a bit from those temperatures, but also make it feel significantly colder. So, yeah, it's not looking great. Sometimes these sort of average outlooks can be pretty pleasant and warm if the precipitation was nothing and we're seeing plenty of sunshine. You can probably see maybe 15 degrees with freezing upper air temperatures this time of year in the daytime. But with freezing upper air temperatures with rain and uh, cloud and wind around, it probably won't feel much higher than mid to high single digits for many areas, maybe peaking at 10 degrees or so further southward. So really not looking great with this southerly tracking jet stream. Hopefully things do change, but of course I did say yesterday We've got to expect this after a sudden stratospheric warming. This is sort of the typical conditions. We have seen our sort of colder spell uh, and, of course, little recurrences of that colder spell like we're seeing at the moment with a bit more blocking. But the general theme for higher pressure systems in the northern hemisphere over the North Pole are continuing, and that is causing this southerly tracking jet stream and for cold air to continue to spill out into the mid-latitudes and for the UK into the North Atlantic in towards uh, our, our islands. So unfortunately, it's not looking great if you're looking for 
not warmer, drier weather, but hopefully things will look a little bit more on the up for April. There are some longer range charts that have suggested perhaps warmer, drier conditions to prevail later this year, as uh, later into spring and early summer. Of course, we'll have to see if those come to fruition, but for the time being, looking pretty cool, pretty unsettled, and nothing particularly spectacular. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.